Hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. We are living in some anxious times right now. Um, you know, we're being quarantined in our homes, you know, we can't go out and be with friends or to go places where we like to go. And so it can be very challenging and but with God's help, we can all get through this together. Now today I'd like to uh, do our lesson is on Mark chapter 15. And um, first I'm gonna first I'm gonna say a prayer and then we'll get started. What a joyous day it is. Thank you, Father, for Jesus, your son. You loved us so much that you sent you Jesus to this earth to save us from our sin by dying on the cross and then raising him from the dead this Easter morning so that we could have life and, and spend eternity with you. Help us to serve you always with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And help us to do your will. I pray that everything we do and everything we say will bring glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So now, for our lesson, we're going to start with verses 16. And go through... 32. So if you would like to pause this and read those verses, and then I'll be back. Okay. Now, after, uh, in the lesson last week with Lisa, um, after his betrayal and arrest in the garden, Jesus was taken before Pontius Pilate. Now, Pontius Pilate was a Roman governor in Judea at that time, and he was a harsh ruler who despised the Jews. Now, Pilate, at the will of the people, had Jesus whipped and beaten by the soldiers. So now today... With our left, starting our lesson in verses 16 through 19, Jesus was mocked and beaten by the soldiers. They intended to humiliate Jesus by putting a, a, by clothing him in a purple cloak, which was the color of royalty. And they placed a crown of thorns on his head. Now, along with the humiliation, Jesus experienced torture as the soldiers struck him and hit him on the head repeatedly. And they spit on him. And then they let him out to be crucified. They went to, to uh, Golgotha which was the place of the crucifixion, and they j nailed Jesus to a cross with a criminal on each side of him. And his clothing was divided among the soldiers. So, they, so the soldiers cast lots. By, and they did this, what they did this by um, they made a decision by chance, like throwing dice or, or drawing straws. And soldiers, they did this to decide who would receive Jesus' clothing. Because they had the right to take the clothing for themselves after after uh, Jesus was crucified. 
So Jesus endured awful emotional and uh, physical pain to pay the penalty for our sin. And so I'm going to ask you these questions. Oh, but first, before I ask you the questions, Jesus, I want to let you know that Jesus could have saved himself, but he didn't. He endured this suffering because of his love for us. You know, we had a significant part in the drama that afternoon because our sins were on that cross too. Jesus died on that cross for us to pay the penalty for our sin. So what does it look like to live a life of worship and service? And do you think most Christians live a life of worship and service? Why or why not? Um, you know, all we have to do to receive salvation is to repent and believe and accept Jesus into our heart and into our life. Our worship and our service are the overflow of our love for him and what he's done to, for us. So we should always remember who God is and that he deserves our worship. Okay, so now we're going to go to verses 33 through 47. I'm going to ask you to pause, read the verses, and then... I'll be back. Okay. So now, after three hours on the cross, darkness overcame the land. And this darkness was significant because it pictured God's wrath and judgment upon sin. And Jesus, who for the first time in all eternity had been separated from God, the Father, because of our sin. And he cried out to the Father, asking the Father why he had forsaken him. And after that, um, Jesus, he gave up his last breath and he gave up his spirit. And at that moment that Jesus died, the curtain in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the, signific the significance of the curtain was that it showed that his death for our sins had opened up a way for us to approach our holy God. So now, when evening came, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a member of the Sanhedrin and a secret disciple of Jesus, he asked Pilate to take down the dead body of Jesus and bury him. Now Pilate was very surprised to hear 
that Jesus had died already. And so he wanted to verify the report. So he contacted the centurion, who was a trusted source and an expert in crucifixion. So after being assured of Jesus' death, Pilate granted the request. And so Joseph wrapped Jesus' body in a linen and laid him in a tomb. And there was a large stone rolled against the entrance of the tomb. So now I'm going to ask you some more questions. Why couldn't people automatically have access to the Father before Jesus? And what does it look like to walk closely with God? So now we're going to go to verses or go to chapter 16 verses 1 through 8 and I'm going to ask you to pause it again and read those verses and then I'll be back. Okay, now early in the morning after the Sabbath ended, the women came to the tomb intending to anoint Jesus' body for burial. Okay, so this was something that the that the women did as a sign of of and devotion and respect of, of Jesus' body. So it's kind of like bringing flowers to a grave today. And so, upon arrival at the tomb, they were greeted by a messenger or an angel who had announced that Jesus wasn't there and that he had risen and they were instructed to go tell Jesus' disciples what they had found. Now the Lord's resurrection could be verified. But it was, but it was much more than a fact in history. It proved that he was tr Jesus was truly God's son. And, and that death had been conquered for Jesus and for all who believe in him. So the resurrection is vitally important for many reasons. Because Jesus kept his promise to rise from the dead so that we can believe he will keep his other promises. And the resurrection ensures that the ruler of God's eternal kingdom will be the living Christ. Another important thing is Christ's resurrection gives us the assurance that we will also be right, resurrected someday. And that the power of God that brought Christ's body back from the dead is available to us to bring our morally and spiritually dead selves back to life so that we can change and grow. So now, the questions I'm going to ask you are, what does it look like to live boldly for Christ? And why is it so easy for us to be ashamed or afraid to speak out about our faith? And how do we overcome that? I'm glad I could share this with you. Uh, I hope to see you soon.